Welcome to the 10 minute stress check GUI walkthrough. We will be covering the basics of key GUI components. For a complete description, please refer to the stress check master guide. First, let's discuss the model window and model manipulation using the mouse. Let's open the 3D iBolt model from the parts handbook library. After loading, the model and attributes show up in the model window with the global triad at the bottom left. Note that this model, as loaded, has only element objects displayed and has load and constraint attributes enabled. With the default model manipulation settings, we can hold down the right mouse button and move the mouse to rotate. If we scroll our mouse wheel, we will zoom in and out. If we hold down our mouse wheel and drag, we translate the model. If we want to box zoom, we hit B on our keyboard and we click and drag with the right mouse button over a region and release. We can hit R on the keyboard to go back to rotate mode for our right mouse button. If we want to bring the model back and centered, we can hit C on the keyboard. And if we want to select an object on the screen, create a new object, or make an assignment, we will use the left mouse button click. Let's now discuss the basics of File I.O. To start a new project, click File New or the white page icon on the main toolbar. The current session is cleared. To open any stress check input file, work file, project file, or legacy stress check dataset, simply click File Open or the Open Folder icon and select a stress check compatible file. Let's navigate to another model in the parts handbook, LugClev is full, and open. Once loaded, let's go ahead and save the project. We will save the project as lugproject.scp. Note, new project is replaced with the path to the currently saved project. The project contains all session data, including the model and solution. And once saved to the SCP file, the project file will be unaffected by any new changes to the current session. If we decide to save the project as a different name, we can always use Save As. The stress check project file contains everything in the session, so sometimes we want to just have the model input only. We can use File Export or click the Export icon and export a stress check work file with extension SCW. We will call this lug work file to save a snapshot of the current state of our model inputs. To import CAD geometry, such as Parasolid, IGIS, or STEP, into a new project, we can use File Import or click the Import icon. We are reminded to keep our units consistent. Select a supported file, in this case an IGIS file called bracket.igs, and click Open. The geometry will appear in the model window after translation. Let's go back to the lug project and talk about toolbars. We've already utilized some of the main toolbar by clicking the New, Open, Save, Import, and Export buttons. We will discuss the other notable icons in the main toolbar shortly. If we've assigned loads and constraints to our model, or assigned other model attributes, we can toggle the displays in the Attributes toolbar. We can toggle on the loads and the constraints. In the Reference Theory Units toolbar, the selectors have already been preset for the lug project model as 3D Reference, Elasticity Theory, and other units. For Reference, Stress Check supports Planar, which is 2D Plane Stress or Plane Strain, 3D, Extrude, which extrudes a planar model to a defined thickness, axisymmetric, and plate. For Theory, Stress Check supports Elasticity and Steady State Conduction Heat Transfer. For Units, Stress Check supports US Customary, SI, or Other, in which the user defines the unit system. Note, once the units have been set for a model, they are fixed for the project. In the Views toolbar, we have plenty of options to manipulate the model views, orientation, and location. We have built-in standard views such as front, top, and isometric, accessible by clicking the small black down arrow. We can center the model by clicking the bullseye or by hitting C on the keyboard. We can change the right mouse click options by switching from Rotate, which is the default, to Rotate about a selected point, Translate, Zoom, and Box Zoom. We can also change model rendering options by clicking the View Controls icon and modifying our defaults. In the Edit toolbar, we can undo and redo session events, cancel selected objects, invert selection of objects, show and hide objects by specific object type, and refresh the model window. 
In the Display Objects toolbar, we can enable and disable the display of specific object types, such as points, curves, and elements, and toggle between mesh layers if we have automatically refined a hand mesh or applied a laminated stack. For example, let's disable the surface and points displays. In the Display Options toolbar, we can toggle a variety of options for controlling things like perspective, light source, rendering mode, which is shaded, hidden lines, and wireframe, view cutting planes, shrink the elements, and enable or disable wetted faces to control the rendering of internal element edges and faces. Let's go back and open the eyebolt model from the handbook. In the main toolbar, the pink icon is for model information. This is where we define things like model information, parameters, and rules. The parameters can be constants or expressions dependent on one another and can be used practically anywhere there is a text field. The green icon is for model creation or model input. Stress check uses tab dialogs to separate inputs or classes and an action object method design or AOM for inputs. The left mouse button is the action. For example, if we wish to create a box at a certain location, we will go to the geometry tab and change our AOM combos to create, box, locate, and enter our data. Click accept or left click in the model window when ready to create the object. Similarly, we can create mesh objects like nodes and elements, assign thicknesses, define and assign materials, assign loads and constraints, and assign many other model inputs using the AOM combos and usually a left click in the model window for the action. The yellow icon is for computing the solution. Again, tab dialogs separate the solver types. We support solutions of linear, nonlinear, modal, and more. Typically, we will solve a linear solution first by entering the range of polynomials we wish to solve for our fixed mesh, then go to the Solve tab and solve the model. So here we can enter, say, 6 to 8, go to the Solve tab, and click Solve. The solution runs and finishes with 0.47% estimated error. We want to post-process the results, so we will click the multicolored icon. After the solution is complete, we can use the tabs in View Results to perform live post-processing of the solution information. This includes computing the estimated error and the potential energy in the Error tab, plotting deformed shapes and contours of stresses, strains, displacements, or other user-defined formula in the Plot tab, extracting the minimum or maximum of any engineering function, and showing convergence of the minimum or maximum in the Min-Max tab, and extracting complex gradients of any engineering function along mesh or geometry in the Points tab. The F parentheses icon is the formula icon. Here we can enter relationships between parameters or other formulae, use intrinsic functions, define formulaic expressions with Fortran and C language functions, and spatially vary our inputs. Formulae can be used in practically any input field in post-processing. The question mark is the AOM or Action Object Method Help, which depending on the AOM settings of the combo boxes, will bring up context-sensitive help on the expected inputs and outcomes. For example, here are the AOM help results for Select, Any Object, Locate. For more information on getting started with the StressCheck GUI features, please refer to the StressCheck Self-Training Guide, Getting Started Guide, or Master Guide.